Hey, what's going on everybody? I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to Noor Fitness. My name is Muhammad Noor, or you can call me Coach Noor or just Coach. And if you've been experiencing any discomfort or pain from too much activity or even not enough activity, you know what I'm talking about. If you got a desk job or if you've been standing or lying down in the same position for too long, that can give you some stiffness too. So in this video, I'm going to show you some general stretches that can help reduce that discomfort, improve your movement, and shorten your recovery time so you can get back to working out that much sooner. Before we begin, I should mention, it's not ideal to do static stretching. Static means you're holding the stretch and you're not moving. It's not ideal to do that before a workout when your muscles are cold and you haven't moved around at all. It's better to do active stretching. That means you're moving to do that before you exercise. So if you're totally cold right now, it would be better to do a little bit of a brief warm up. You could pause this video, go do a, a little cardio for five minutes, three minutes, even two minutes, or we can do a little active stretching right now. I'll give you an example. Why don't we get 12 squats? We're gonna breathe in on the way down and out on the way up. To swing the arms in and out. Hands at shoulder height, thumbs up. It's another example of active stretching. So I am stretching, but I'm moving. So I'm getting the blood flowing in my muscles and it's a little bit safer when I go into my stretches. Then let's get big circles with the arms. Widest range of motion you can. And the other way. Okay, then space the feet a little wider. Let's get some rotations. Keep your arms in alignment. Okay, and then let's just reach for the floor and the ceiling. Gently. You don't need to go all the way. Don't strain yourself. We're just warming up. We're just getting the blood flowing. Get a little bit loose. Okay, that should be good. Let's go down to the mat and get started. First, we're gonna get the butterfly stretch. It's where you put the bottom of your feet together. Pull your feet as close to your groin as you can. Then you start to push your knees closer to the floor. You can use your forearms or your elbows to push your knees closer to the floor. From here, we're gonna bring the head as close to the feet as you can. We're gonna be holding these stretches 25 seconds. And then let's come out of that gently. Next, we'll stretch the hamstrings and lower back. This is the old textbook one. Everyone knows this. You're just going to stretch your legs out in front of you. Reach your hands forward toward your toes. Then you bring your head as close to your knees as you can. This is optional. If you're very flexible, you can grab the back of your legs and pull your head closer to your knees. Okay, now we're gonna turn over. 
face down. And we're gonna work the cobra. This one is to stretch your hip flexors, that's the front of your hip, and your abs. You keep your waist pushed into the floor, and you push yourself up with your arms, curling your spine all the way through your neck. So you're trying to look up at the ceiling. Good advice is to control your breathing. Try to breathe slowly. And every time you inhale and exhale, you try to get a little deeper in the stretch. All right, let's come down gently. We're gonna transition into the child's pose. We're coming up on the hands and knees, Bring your hips as close to your feet as you can, and bring your head as close to your knees as you can. Your arms are straight. Now, for anyone that has any challenge getting your head close to your knees, another option, I'm gonna try this way so you can see, is you can space your knees and feet a little wider, and that can help sometimes. So that, that's just another option. You can do it with the knees together, or you can go wide with the knees like this. Okay, then, this is a great way to stretch your lats. Keeping your hands together, you're gonna bring your hands over to one side. And then we're getting the lats on this side. And the other side. Okay, then let's get S position. That's good for the muscles around the hip. So you bend one knee in front of you and the other knee behind you. Then you bring the opposite shoulder to the knee that's in front. So this is my right knee. I bring my left shoulder to the right knee. Another option, if you're very flexible, you can, I'm not that flexible, but some people can straighten their back leg. If you can straighten the leg in the back, extra credit. I'm going to keep the knee bent. Okay, let's get the other side. All right, next, let's get the IT band stretch. But I'm gonna give you a aerial view because the angles are important on this one. We're gonna lie down with your arms stretched out like a cross. And raise one leg with your foot directly above your hips. Swing it over to the side on a 90 degree angle. So you're trying to keep it in alignment with your hip. 90 degrees, not 45, that's not gonna do it. To get the stretch that we really want, you gotta get the foot directly above the hip. Keep your legs as straight as possible. Doesn't have to be perfect, just do the best you can. And then we'll bring this leg down and we'll alternate legs. Now, if you want, you can hold this stretch for 20, 25 seconds, but I like to keep moving. That's just my preference on this one. I like to bring the leg down, Leave it there for a second or two. Bring it back up slowly. 
because when there's something wrong with my back, there's nothing wrong with my back right now, but when I have some lower back pain, if uh, vertebrae is out of place, sometimes I do this, and right there will pop back into place. I think it's good to get four or five on each side. Next, we'll get the crossover. Bend one knee, cross the foot over the other leg, Pull the foot as close to your hip as you can, and then you just hug your own knee. Just hug your knee as close to you as you can. And you'll know you're doing it right if you feel it in this side of the hip on the knee that you have bent. and the other leg. Okay, I'm trying to slow down the breathing. And as much as you can, relax. For the next stretch, we're gonna keep this position and we're gonna twist. Brace the back of your arm, your tricep, against the knee, and your other hand's on the floor, and you just twist as far as you can. Keep your legs as is and get the other way. Then we're going to switch legs again. And twist both ways again. Next, we're gonna get the inner thigh, the inner thigh muscles, the groin muscles. If you're very flexible and you can do a full split, then be my guest, do a full split. If you need to work your way up to that, a good way is to do one leg at a time. So I'm on one knee, the other foot is flat, and I'm gonna ease that foot out. Heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, very gradually. until I feel stretch. And then another good thing to do in this stretch is to very subtly rotate your pelvis. I'll show you, if this was your waist or your pelvis, you're gonna very subtly twist it forward and very subtly twist it backward. And when you do that, you're gonna get different angles of the inner thigh muscles. It's something that's easier to feel than to show because it's very subtle. But I'm very subtly twisting and rotating the pelvis and as I do that, I feel the stretch in different parts of the muscle, different angles. Very important, when you're coming out of this stretch, if you just quickly pull your foot close to your, your hip, you're gonna run the risk of pulling, straining, or even tearing that muscle. So instead, we ease out of it. 
heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, heel toe. And then we'll get to the other side. Same thing, heel toe, heel toe, heel toe. It's also a good idea on this one to get different angles. Sometimes come down on your forearms. And then back up on your hands. And once again, we'll ease the foot back in. Heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe. Now we'll stretch the hip flexor. That's this muscle in front of the hip that connects to your abs. You use it when you're raising your legs in front of you. To stretch that, we're going to get in a staggered stance as if you're going to do a lunge. And get as wide as you can. And you straighten the back leg. And you try to arch your back uh, backward. Try to lean back. Then to get a deeper stretch, the side that you're stretching, there's my left side, my left leg is straight. I'm going to raise my left arm and lean over to the side just a little bit, just slightly. And then you get a little deeper of a stretch. And let's get the other side. Next, we'll stretch the quads. That's the muscles in the front of your thigh. Most of you know this one. If you need to lean on something, staying close to a wall, you can rest your hand on a wall or a chair maybe, and you can bend your knee, grab the back of your foot, and pull your foot as close to your hip as you can. and the other leg. If you're not able to grab the back of your foot. A way you can modify this stretch is uh, you would stand in front of a couch, chair, stool, anything like that, or even a bed. And you put your foot up there and then just shift your, your weight backward toward your foot. Now to stretch your pecs, shoulder, and bicep, we do the doorway stretch. So position your hand on the inside of a doorway at shoulder height. And I'm gonna show you, I'm keeping my palm flat, keep my hand straight. And then simply turn away from your hand. Turn everything, turn your feet, hips, shoulders, and head away from your hand. So you're stretching everything. These muscles are all connected. So as I'm stretching my pecs, shoulder, and bicep, even the forearm a little bit. Be gentle with this one. You want to get a good stretch, but don't overdo it because for some people, the rotator cuff is a little bit delicate. And if you go too, there is such a thing as stretching too much. You don't want to overstretch. I'll put my hand here for the other side.
another good stretch for the lats. Like I said, everything's connected. So the triceps are connected to the lats. You're gonna get both. You tuck your chin down, bend one elbow, and with the other arm, pull the elbow across as far as it'll go. You may have to do this two or three times to get in position. Then from here, I use my own head to push the elbow further back. And then you get a deeper stretch. After you've been in that a few seconds, if you want to get even further, just lean to the side a little bit. And the other arm. Tuck your chin down, bend the elbow, grab the elbow with your other hand, pull it across, and then push back with your own head. Okay, and lean over a little bit to get a deeper stretch. And then for your rear delts and upper back, just extend one arm in front of you, bend the elbow, and push your elbow toward your other shoulder. And for this one, if you want to get a deeper stretch, you can arch your upper back, round your back out. And the other side. And then let's finish with good old fashioned side bends. One hand on the hip, extend the other arm, and just lean to the side a little bit. If you want to hold this, you can. Like I said, 20 to 30 seconds. But I like to alternate, just hold it for a few seconds on each side. But everybody's different. Part of fitness is learning your own body and learning what's best for you. That goes for exercise, eating, you name it. Okay, so there you go. That's a pretty general, well-rounded stretching routine that should keep everything in working order. Feel free if you have other stretches you like or you learned elsewhere, add them to that. How often should you stretch? As often as you need to, especially if you have some aches and pains, integrate that into your activity every week between 20 and 30 minutes. Maybe not every day, but as close to it as possible.